Hello and welcome to Fresh of the Trade, the podcast series where you can learn from the best in the business. I'm your host, Zeno, from Curie. Curie is an IM alumni venture and India's first revenue tech firm. We're busy believing startups and corporations to maximize their revenue potential by building the best revenue team. In this series, we invite industry experts to share their practical tips, insights, and secrets of success. So, whether you are an employee, a student, or a life of journal, you will find something valuable and interesting in every episode. So today we have a very special guest with us, Vipin Sitkara. With over 31 years of experience in sales, Vipin currently serves as the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Uniclinger. He has previously worked with renowned companies such as Fox Marshall, Eagle Bosnack, and Signo. He is expertise in industrial sales, technical products, and marketing solutions. In his current role, he leads sales and marketing efforts setting strategies and managing a team, or rooted in the wealth of diverse industry experiences. So, Bipin Sitkara, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us today. So, Bipin, could you please let us know, yeah. Bipin, could you please let us know that what inspired you to pursue a career in sales? Okay, thanks. So, uh, I'll slightly take you to my childhood. So, as a child, when I was growing up, we used to have summer vacations at school. I was about an 11, 12, 13 year old child that time. And during the summer breaks, uh, I used to collect all the storybooks and comics that I had at home and take it uh, you know, near my house and in the colony and set up a small stall and give them on rent to people. You know, So uh, uh, children used to come, some mothers used to come to take storybooks for their children. So there was a need of uh, people to read stories and spend their time during their vacations. They did not want to go all the way to the Delhi Public Library to rent these books. So they would come by, take the books, and this used to be a huge success. Also, I used to enjoy this a lot. And me and my younger brother used to do this. We did it two or three years. So doing this, later on, I realized that uh, what we were basically doing was we were fulfilling a need uh, with convenience uh, that you know the customers could uh, take benefit of. Okay. So that was the starting point that drew me into sales. So later on, when I graduated in engineering, I did my BTEC, uh, and I was appearing for job interviews. So there was one job which said that they need sales engineers. That really drew my attention. And I was thinking that I hope I get selected in this. So I appeared for the interview and got selected. And that's how my journey into the sales profession started. Okay, so then nice one. Then, so just wanted to know that how do you define and measure success in your goal as GP of sales? And what key performance indicators or KPIs are most important to you? Okay, good. So the vice president of sales. Uh, has the overall responsibility to develop and execute the revenue growth strategy of the organization. VP right. Sales, together with the leadership, also works on expansion plans of the company as well as on the long-term sustainability of the organization. One of the most important parameters, in my opinion, is in measuring the success would be achievement with respect to the sales targets. So have we achieved or exceeded the monthly, quarterly, half yearly, and annual sales targets? That is really important. Another KPI I would say which is important is revenue growth. Right. How have we fared on the metrics of the revenue growth? Then the other KPI that I would think is real that really matters is how have we performed uh, in the new geographies and the new markets? How have we done on the new product launches? Okay, and then uh, then there are KPIs related to customer satisfaction. Uh, so these are the KPIs I think are really important. But there is one more point that I think I must say. So if you look at any organization, uh, the sales team typically is either the largest team or is a very large team in the organization. Right, right. So, uh, uh, in addition to understanding and satisfying the customer needs, 
I need to also understand and satisfy the needs of the sales team members at all levels. We must have a happy and motivated sales team. An unhappy sales or service person is quite unlikely to create a happy customer. Hence, I will also measure my success in terms of how happy, motivated, and well trained my sales team is. Yeah, pretty good. So, Pippin just wanted to know, like, as we all know, that sales technology and tools are constantly evolving, right? So, how do you stay up to date with the latest sales technologies and how have they impacted your team's performance? So, staying up to date with the latest sales technologies is crucial for sales professionals and leaders to remain competitive. Right. Not only to remain competitive, to enhance the team performance as well. Okay, so how do I stay updated? That's a good question. Uh, I do a lot of networking. Uh, it is important to remain connected to various networks with peers, with industry leaders, and also with the young generation. Uh, the second would be feedback loops. Uh, it is always a good idea to establish feedback loops within the sales teams. So the feedback loops help with a lot of insights. Okay. So some new trends I would like to say, which have had a positive Im impact on the performance of uh, the sales team. One is data-driven decision-making, using CRM to gain insights, see the trends and analyze patterns, and then uh, accordingly decide the strategy or uh, the way forward. Uh, another trend that I'm seeing, which is very useful is recruitment using the social networks. So this is much more effective and often leads to you know getting a candidate with a better fit another area is training uh, there are a lot of online tools that help for training development and knowledge building within the sales team so training is one area and then a use of ai to enhance customer satisfaction so Zainab, I, i'll just there's a disturbance i'll just settle that and we can just continue Give me a second. Sure, sure, sure. Take your time. Yes, we can start. Okay. Moving on to the third question. So, Vivin, what do you consider the most significant sales trend for changes in customer behavior in recent years? And how have you adapted your approach to address them? Okay. So today, if you see customers, they have a lot of access to information. Okay, they are much more aware. Right. They are more likely to know about the options and the substitutes. Information is available to them on the device of their choice. Now, if you look at the companies who are selling and providing goods, services, and products, they also have access to a lot of data. They are now using AI, they're using data science to interpret data, determine the trends, patterns. AI is helping sellers focus their efforts on the right product mix, geographies, and the right markets. Uh, another trend that I'm seeing is value-based selling. So a lot of people, uh, companies are talking about how the product is going to add value to the customer. Right. Then, uh, of late, all of us are seeing social selling and the role of influencers. Okay, so companies are increasingly using social media to build and manage customer relations. Also, we see the use of influencer-based marketing to build awareness and for product launches and many other things. Right. One important trend that is uh, a change that is happening is now the Gen Z is also becoming a buyer. Uh, how Gen Z buys goods and services is very different from the millennials and very, very different from the Gen X. So companies are aligning to this new reality and are putting in strategies to satisfy the needs of Gen Z. One more last point I would like to mention is the increasing trend to focus on customer success versus customer satisfaction. So companies are trying to you know, get invested in the success of their customer, not just satisfy the customer. Right. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for your answer. Moving on to another question. 
So, Vipin, as we all know that sales often involves negotiation. So, what are your tips for effective negotiation, both with customers and internally within your organization? Okay, good. So, this question has two parts. One is negotiation with customers and the other is negotiation within the organization. So, I'll answer negotiation within the organization first. Sure. Okay. So, I don't think negotiation is a good idea within the organization. I believe that within the organization, we need total transparency. Okay. Right. There shouldn't be any kind of second guessing going on within the company. Okay. So, that is my fundamental take on negotiation within the organization. There is no room for it. Uh, now, coming to the next part, negotiation with customers. So I'll share some tips, uh, very useful tips I'll share. Okay. The first is preparation is very important. Okay. Prepare well before you enter the negotiation. Do some scenario analysis beforehand. It helps a lot. Second tip I would like to uh, give is that always emphasize on the value proposition of whatever you're selling rather than the price. Uh, another uh, point would be use uh, active listening. Use the power of listening. Listening is very important. Okay, Customers can tell you a lot of useful things that can help you during the negotiation. In fact, uh, you can listen your way into an order. Conversely, you can also talk yourself out of the order. So listening should be 70% of whatever you communicate during the negotiation, right. talking can be about 30%. Right, right. Another thing I would like to say is uh, enjoy the process of negotiation. Okay, Make it like an exchange of ideas. Try and learn something new in every negotiation that you go through. And do not ever reduce your negotiation to a mere haggling process. Okay. One more tip. Uh, do not stress out or get tensed during the negotiation. Keep your calm. Another thing, take a short break if there is a deadlock. Sometimes in negotiation, there is a deadlock. You're stuck on something, customer is stuck on something. and uh, So uh, take a break, go out, breathe some fresh air. This not only helps to de-stress, it clears the mind and you know helps your mind think and find a way out. The last point, ensure that the negotiation is a win-win. Right, right. At the end of the negotiation process, the customer should feel So these are my some tips on the negotiation. Amazing. So, Pippin, uh, as we all know that sales ethics and integrity are vital, right? So can you discuss how you will still these values in your sales team and maintain high ethical standards? Okay, so sales ethics is basically a set of behaviors which ensure that every customer or prospect is treated with honesty, fairness, and integrity. Right. Fairness, honesty, and integrity are the three pillars of sales ethics. Customers like to do business with companies which have a high standard of ethics. So there are few principles that I live by. And I also encourage my teams to adhere to them. Uh, the first is do not oversell. Right. Second is do not make misleading claims. Right. And third would be do not talk bad about competition. Okay. Uh, so how do I instill these values in my sales team? I talk to the team about ethics and values especially during review meetings, during sales meets, etc. I also do this by demonstrating these values myself when I, whenever I am with them making sales to customers. Right. So, Pippin, um, like if we all know that customer feedback is invaluable, right? So how do you gather and utilize feedback from customers to improve your sales process, processes like and offering? Okay. So customer feedback is important. Like you said, it enables an organization to make customer-centric decisions. 
Right. So ways to get customer feedback are one is customer feedback surveys. Okay. And uh, usually what I prefer is to outsource them so that we get unbiased information. So okay. it's a good idea to you know have outsourced uh, customer uh, feedback service. There are very good organizations that do it. And the feedback that you get is unbiased. Yeah. Second, typically what most companies do is an email questionnaire. Another thing which companies must do is review the comments on social media. That actually gives the true picture. Then one should have formal conversations with the frontline sales and customer service teams. This is a way to get a broad perspective. Okay. Next is what do we do with the feedback? We use the feedback to identify improvement areas. Improvement could be in transaction related area or a product related, service related or anything else. Right. Uh, feedback also helps innovate product and service offerings. Okay. Customer feedback also gives an idea about the customer expectations. Right. Yes. So thank you so much, Vipin, for your answer. Vipin, uh, like, what advice would you give to aspiring sales professionals who aim to find the ladder to execute positions like CP of sales? OK, first, I'll share a good news. Uh, the good news is that over 70% of the executive positions like VP, CEO, COO, President, all these kind of executive positions in the corporate world are held by people who have a background in sales. Right. So by coming into sales, what I would say is that you have chosen a good profession. Okay. A salesperson has the unique advantage of understanding customer needs firsthand. Right. right. Yeah. Also, salespeople are usually multitaskers and go-getters because the nature of the job is like that. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. have a positive attitude. And also, they are optimistic people. Right. One more thing. Uh, uh, you know, rejection is a part of sales. Uh, many times, you lose orders, so you feel rejected. OK, and this makes a salesperson resilient. So all these are key requirements for executive and leadership positions also. Hence, people with a sales background do extremely well in top positions in any company. So I would give uh, some tips to the aspiring sales professionals that you asked in your question. First is believe in yourself. Have firm belief in yourself. Uh, work hard and be patient. Your time will come. Uh, be relentless in achieving your sales targets. That will help you grow the ladder faster. As I said earlier also, listen more. That helps a lot. Okay. Uh, have complete knowledge of your industry, your products, and how your products benefit the customers. Okay. Be knowledgeable about all the products that you're representing. Right. Be passionate about the company that you represent. That is also important. I would also like to add that you need to enjoy meeting new people. Try and learn from them. There is a lot of learning that is to be you know, uh, gained from meeting and uh, talking to new people. So enjoy that process. Learn from the people you meet. Enjoy and learn from your travels as well. Uh, read good books. Read as much as possible. Okay. Be a people person. Be friendly and approachable always. Another thing I would like to say is do not overcommit to your customers. That's a very bad habit. Okay, you will not be successful if you always be overcommitting to customers. Be be truthful and honest always. Uh, one more thing I would like to give is one more advice is practice being a storyteller. Okay, customers love stories. Always remember. Facts tell, stories tell. Right. Right. Amazing. So, Bipin, uh, just wanted to know that in terms of leadership, what are your core, uh, like, core principles for managing and motivating your sales team? Okay. First and foremost, I always focus on building a high performance sales team. I try to have good proven professionals in my team. And 
I also try to keep the team diverse so that you know different ideas keep coming up. Right, right. Yeah. I am always flexible with my leadership style. I firmly believe in the all-around development of my team members and push for their growth and development. Amazing. Also, I support the team members whenever they are in a you know situation. I help resolve conflicts as soon as they get noticed. I also share any of the stress that the team is facing. Then I do spend a lot of time in front of the customers with the team. So uh, understand the customers along with the team. That's important. Um, what I also do is we celebrate achievements and success of the team and also of the individual members in the team. Right. Along with the leadership of the company, I also work to suitably structure the compensation and incentive plans such that the team is happy and motivated at all times. Right, right. One more point I would like to say what I stand by is I try to be fair and honest at all times with every member in the team. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So Bupin, moving on to another question. Uh, what have been your most significant learning or insights throughout your career as a VP of sales? That you wish you know when you started. Yeah, that's that's a nice question. So, so one is that uh, whole thing about long term relationships. So when I started, I would focus on a particular sale and move on. Over a period of time, I learned that it's important to focus on long term relationships with customers rather than just making a sale. Okay. Uh, I also learned that listening is really important. Understanding the customer pain points helps provide solutions and products that genuinely address their concerns. Right. Then another learning for me was that rejection is a part of sales life. So one has to be resilient. So it's a very important skill that helps a person advance both in career and in life. Right. right. Uh, one more thing, product knowledge is very important. That is fundamental. How the products are going to benefit the customer, really important. One must know all of this. Uh, we have a lot to learn, actually, from the new people we meet. Keep that in mind. A lot of learning is also there from the travels and the networks we develop. I must also add that uh, one must enjoy the job. If you enjoy the job, you will definitely, definitely rise to the top. Right. Yes. Thank you so much, Bipin, for your wonderful answer. Moving on to another question. So, Bipin, according to you, which is more accepting towards selling, conventional or consulting? Okay. See, uh, really, the choice between conventional and consulting selling actually often depends on the nature of the product and service, the industry, the preference of the salesperson, and the customer both. Uh, both approaches have their merit. And the effectiveness of each of the approaches can vary based on the context. Conventional selling is typically direct and transactional in nature. Conventional selling is useful. It's very useful when the customer needs are very well known and also with products that have a clear value proposition. Uh, as a contrast, consultative selling involves a more customer centric approach. In in consultative selling, the salespeople are more like advisors or solution providers. Right, right. Uh, consultative selling enables build long-term relationships and also helps to provide exceptional value to the customer. Right. The cons of consultative selling is that it's time-consuming and requires skill training, etc. Right, Many right. times, it's good to have a hybrid approach that works very well. Right, right. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, moving on to the last question. So, Bipin just wanted to know that any new slang you get introduced recently? Okay. So, social selling is a new term that has been gaining popularity in the past couple of years. Right. This is basically the use of social media to connect with customers, to build relationships, and ultimately drive sales. So it basically involves leveraging social networks for customer engagement. 
it can also be used for product launches and in many other scenarios so yes that's something new that is coming up social side right 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 so Pratin, thank you so much for joining us today we had a good time thank you so much thank you zainab and thank you the entire curate team for organizing this it was my pleasure thank you so much Pratin. hope you had a great day yeah bye-bye